Hey guys, Celestia here. In the last part of the story of Fig, Cecilia left her comfort zone, zone of her home and crashed the Elven clan meeting. She wanted to be introduced to the clan so that she could tell them about her ability and to tell them about the vision she'd had. She knew that it was going to cause a problem, but she also knew that she had to do it. So we're going to pick it up from there. After Cecilia telling everyone that there were members of the clan who, as she spoke, were plotting her demise. People in the crowd were shocked. So, you, know, look, you know, looking at her like, yeah, okay, we're great. She said, I know that you don't believe that anyone who was not completely mad would think of killing another person. But it's not just because they feel they feel that they have to. If I thought for a minute that it was true that these men, that these people somehow had something to do with Doric's death so that she wouldn't be able to see into the future and see what they were up to. If I didn't know for a fact that that wasn't true, I would think perhaps it was. But now that I'm here, and now that they know that I too can see into the future, I think perhaps I am a threat to them, as I was with Elthenor. Elthenor had a hatred for me that went beyond reason. How can you hate someone you've never met? How can you hate someone that you've never seen, you've never laid eyes on? Well, she had that kind of hatred for me, and that was because I was a threat to her plans. Whether she sensed my power, I don't know. Whether the magic user that she was going to contact or had been in contact with told her I was a threat, I don't know. I just know that her loathing of me was not rational, not logical. And the only reason that I can think of was because somehow she saw me as a threat to her plans. She accosted the chief even before the mercenaries came to, to attempt to kill him. She laid her hands on him and shook him. He said, how do you know that? I never told you that. He said, of course. Sorry. Of course. Sorry. Go on. She said, I'm not a very imposing figure. I probably would be able to just be passed by and have no one have a second thought about me unless you're the slightest bit sensitive and you can sense my power, as I've been told by your former seer. Dark has told me she's never met a mind like mine. She told Rowan and Mead the same thing. I don't know 
yet everything that I'm capable of. I know things that have been hinted at by her, but those things really frighten me. And I hope that I never have to use that ability. I can make my thoughts known to others, but I don't. Or at least I haven't. I can read minds. Again, I don't. Like Fig. Unless I have that person's permission or unless that person is a threat directly at me, I won't do it. It's immoral. It's that type of thing that makes abilities like mine feared. Oh, she can read my mind. She's, she's going to read my mind all the time. No. I won't. I can, but I won't. And right now there are those among you saying to yourself, yeah, right. Of course you can. She's just as crazy as Elthenar. And I'm not reading your mind, you're projecting it. And that's the difference between reading someone's mind and reading thoughts projected at you. I have the ability of both. If you're thinking at me, yes, I can tell exactly what you're thinking if you're thinking at me. It's very difficult because you get inundated with thoughts. And that's one of the things that Doric is working on the most for me is building walls against emotions and against random projected thoughts. She told me of someone she knew once who could never seem to have the ability to build the walls and it drove her mad. Constantly having people's thoughts in your mind, never knowing if they're your own, that would be enough to drive anybody mad. And it drove this woman mad. It's a different type of madness than Elthenor. Elthenor was just power crazy. She thought that Philar had been chief long enough, that his family should not be chief anymore, that somebody else's family should have the chance and it should be her. What difference it would have made is none if she'd been made chief because she had no mate, she had no heirs. So if something had happened to her it would have automatically went back to Philar's family because that's the way it is in Elven Law. But I don't know whether she knew that or not. If she had succeeded in killing Philar's entire family, then, well, that might have been different. But that attempt was thwarted by a very large very powerful bodyguard with fur and teeth and claws. And Ebony, the black unicorn, made sure that this bodyguard had teeth and claws, wasn't able to be magically bound in any way or magically bespelled or no magic could be used on him. Yes, he can be killed. He's not immortal. But I know I wouldn't attempt it. And if you have even so much as a quarter of a brain, you wouldn't attempt it either. There are now people out there thinking that I'm talking out my ass. And that's a quote. I'm not. 
I know these things. I know them to be fact, as I've seen them. But visions can be altered by the simplest things. So what I've seen today, or what I saw yesterday, may not come true if something happened tomorrow. But it wouldn't matter because I would just have another vision to compensate. Pilar, I presume you have sent men to go and pick up the bodies. He, he said, yes, I, I did. Why? You might want to have them, have Shadow send a message to them to pick up any evidence that's there because I think you'll find that they were poisoned by Belladonna. Poison of any kind is not a nice death. It's painful. It's horrible. And if the traitors in the clan are thinking that Elthenor wouldn't use it on them or kill them in some other fashion, then you're fools. Macathus was her lover, had been for years. She would kill her own lover to have all of the power to herself. She would certainly kill you. These men again grow deathly pale and they're looking at each other questioningly. One guy's like, She said, I'm very sorry to have crashed your party. Well, not party, your meeting. But these things were necessary for you to know. When Glyneth and Alwyn make the amulet, you must wear them. You must. If not, you will die. Because if the Mind Raper is in anywhere in the vicinity and it grabs a hold of you, you're done for. It grabs hold of you and it doesn't let go until you're dead. And it has your life force. Now, of course, there is one savings. It has to be within a very short distance of you, virtually on top of you to take your life force but it wouldn't matter because you wouldn't see it. It's virtually invisible, it just looks like a mist. So where are the amulets? Even the traitors, you might wanna wear them as well, unless of course you want to join Elthenor in the afterlife. Of course, you'd have to be put down like rabid dogs because you would be a danger to the clan. So I'm going to leave now. I'm not asking you to trust me. I'm not asking you to believe me. Because at this point, quite frankly, I don't give a shit. I know Falar and the family believe me. Galan speaks up before she can say another word and says, and so do the elders. She says, there you go. And the elders are behind her and they're all nodding like. She said, and truth be told, they're really the only ones that need to believe me. Because they're the ones that have to take the action against what I see. Or the information that I give them about what I see. So if you don't believe me, as I said, I don't give a shit. I really don't care. I would meet with the chief and the elders anyway. And they will take the information and deal with it. The 
things that I'm sensing from this crowd. Are quite discouraging. Quite disheartening. Most of you think I'm full crap. That's fine. Most of you wish I'd just shut up and leave. Let the chief talk. So I will. But know this. Those of you among up, that are out there amongst us right now, you're not going to succeed in your plans. Your magic user friend is probably going to be very disheartened by what happens to the mercenaries in Elfenor. And I have a feeling he's certainly not going to come looking for you. So I'm going to leave. I'm going to shut up. And thank you for your kind attention. Flower puts his hand on her arm and she jumps. He says, I'm sorry. He said, just stay here for a moment, please. She says, of course. He said, so. He said, I want to tell you that Cecilia is the clan's new seer. She has told me that she will dedicate the rest of her human life to the clan and its well-being. And as chief, I have the power to make her seer. I can see it by the looks in your faces that you're not crazy about the idea. But as Cecilia said, I don't give a shit. We need a seer. Who amongst you has visions? Anyone? Now's your chance. He said, I am ashamed of all of you. How dare you be rude to this woman? She was telling you visions of things that were happening that could help and benefit the clan, and you treat her like that? How dare you? You can have your own private thoughts. But obviously, most of you can't keep your thoughts to yourself. You know, there are those among us who can read thoughts as well and emotions. Maybe you should keep them in check. I am disgusted by the lot of you. Oh, and I know what you're thinking. Well, it wasn't all of us. Not all of us were thinking that. I don't care. I don't care if it was one, 21. I know it was at least three. But I am disgusted. May I have the elder step forward, please? They go on either side of, they go on the side of Galan. As chief of this clan, I put to you elders. Do you agree with making Cecilia seer of the clan? What say you? They all say I. Clinith, my mate, Fig, my daughter, and Eldred, my daughter's betrothed. What say you? They say I. He said, then it's past. Cecilia is officially 
the Sierra's clan. Like it or lump it. And that's where we're going to leave this part of the story. Well, Laura had a little temper tantrum there. I don't blame him. <coughs> I don't blame him one little bit. How rude, as he said. She's trying to help. You treat her like that? Treat her like garbage? Psh, I don't think so. Anyway. I hope that I am including enough thoughts and a little bit more personality scenery in the last few parts of this story. I know that the interaction between the characters is important, but I've also come to realize that the thoughts of the characters and the people surrounding those characters are important as well. Scenery outside, around the characters themselves, not so much, unless it's vital to the story. But I have now got over 240 subscribers, which is wonderful, and I thank you all. I'm glad that you think that the content on my channel is worth your time. So thank you. So until we get together the next time, my friends, remember, never let anyone tell your spark. And know that I love you all. Goodbye. Till we see each other again. <laughs>